So here we are today. Let's look at the WNBA. Let's look at the crew of matriarchal, feminist, angry lesbians who are running women's basketball. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode. So the thing is, leaving Caitlin Clark out of the Paris Olympics was the right decision for the US team. Okay, though with no doubt, Clark would have drawn more eyeballs to the women's basketball tournament. The Olympics are not meant to be a participation trophy. It should be the best players who go, and hard as it might be for her fans to hear this, Clark is not one of the 12 best US players right now. She's too turnover prone, her total 67 and average 5.6 per game are well above those of anyone else in the WNBA. Those miscues would likely multiply at the Olympics because she'd be firing passes at players whom she's not had a chance to develop timing or chemistry. Clark has never even practiced with the senior national team. She was invited to the final training camp before roster selection but had to miss because it was as it has always been the last few years during the final four. And you might recall she was a little busy that weekend taking Iowa to the title game for a second year in a row. Clark's defense also remains a work in progress which could make her a liability. And as much as she struggles with the physicality in the WNBA, the international game is even tougher. I'd rather be a Christian. I'd rather be a Christian than loved by the world. I'd rather be Christian than be popular. And that's, they're saying their religion is their sexuality or skin color. And so they're saying, I'd rather be gay than be Christian. I'd rather be black than Christian. And that's how you make these decisions. So if I had to give up my Christian identity, what I'm arguing is I would rather die than give up my Christian identity. And I would rather promote my Christian identity over my sexuality or skin color. They're making the same decision. They would rather promote their sexual identity over everything else, or they'd rather promote their skin color over everything else. That's their religion. That's their mission. And so when a star, let, let's say if I was sitting there and I was picking a basketball team and I was like, oh, our biggest star could be a secular satanic person. And overshadow this group of Christians I have on the rest of the team. I would make the same decision they made. I say, okay, this satanic person may be uh, the reason people will tune in and watch, but I'd rather go without the crowd watching and put a team of Christians out there. They're saying, I'd rather go without a big crowd watching, and I'd rather put the BLM, Black Lives Matter, LGBTQIA plus silent P team out there than to have a Christian be the biggest draw. Their decision making, they're, they're, and you can call me a religious bigot because I would prioritize Christianity. Call me a religious bigot. They're bigots too. So here we are today. Let's look at the WNBA. Let's look at the crew of matriarchal, feminist, angry lesbians who are running women's basketball. They're faced with, hey, should I do what's in my best business interest or should I hold on to my bigotry and hatred of heterosexual, white people, and evangelicals? Caitlin Clark may be in my best business interest, but I'm so bigoted and I'm so angry and I'm so uh, removed from forgiveness. I'm so removed from tolerance that I'll choose my bigotry over business. And many of the athletes that sit back and, and buy into all this narrative like, oh, God, these conservatives and this ownership in the NFL and uh, all that. They're all just racist. 
These people, what you're looking at in the WNBA, that's bigotry. That, that's what, that's how you know someone is a committed bigot when they'll do what's not in the interest of business, their pocketbook, to stand on their bigoted values. I'd rather be a bigot than rich. I'd rather be a bigot than make more money. I'd rather be a bigot than, than build a business that allows me to stand on my own two feet. This is bigotry, unchecked, celebrated. This is everything that they say that conservative evangelicals are. They actually are. Because I don't know any conservative evangelicals that would look at a blessing, a blessing, Caitlin Clark, to the WNBA and say, no, I don't want that. I'd rather be bigoted. Every Christian conservative I know would be like, oh, this makes good business sense. Let me throw Caitlin Clark on this team. Why would a group of women choose bigotry over business? Because it's what they do. It's in their nature. They're controlled by emotions. They're controlled by their sexual identity. They're controlled by their race in many aspects, as, particularly as it relates to black women. This is a bad business. Issue. So let me start here when, when people have said, well, she's not one of the 12 best basketball players. She hasn't earned it. And they shouldn't put her on the team. They, they, they've chosen better players. She's not there yet. And so what did they do in 1992 when they were trying to take their league to the next level? Oh, we have to construct a dream team for the Olympics. We have to assemble a team that is highly marketable internationally to sell this game so that we can take our league and this business to the next level. And so did they get in the room and say, we got to pick the 12 best players in the NBA? Or did they get in the room and say, uh, we got to do what's best for business here? We have to put together the most marketable team for the world to take our game to the next level. And so there's a group of idiots running around right now. Who are you going to take off the women's team to make room for Caitlin Clark? Who are you going to? They wouldn't do this in men. So in 1992, Larry Bird was at the end of his career, had major back problems, played like 40, 45 games in the 91-92 season, had to play limited minutes in the Olympics because his back was so bad. He was not one of the 12 best players. He was injury riddled, but he was good for the marketing of the game. Oh, guess who else was good for the marketing of the game? Magic Johnson. Where was Magic Johnson in 91 and 92? He was out of the league with HIV. 